Well, hello, y'all. How y'all are tonight? This is going to be <clears throat> just a trip down memory lane. Today I've watched a lot of videos of uh, guys. They like to uh, hunt, fish, and trap, and, and uh, first one thing another. And, you know, that's something I enjoy, too. I just wasn't uh, obsessed. And I'm not saying obsession is, is a bad thing. You know, if, if you enjoy it, you know, more power to you. <clears throat> I enjoyed it. I just, it just wasn't something that was that uh, prevalent in my life, you know. Now, as a kid, I was raised by a, a sport, a, a hunting and fishing fanatic. <laughs> my da dad... Every weekend, we was either on a fishing bank or we was out someplace for hunting. And uh, he had a hotel restaurant supply business. So he bought everything in bulk. We had one room dedicated uh, strictly for his hunting and fishing stuff. Now, he didn't buy hooks just uh, a pack at a time. He would buy them about a box at a time, or a case at a time, depending on how, how much he used up. And he was a little OCD, and that room had to be immaculate. Everything had its place. He had his gun section. Each gun had uh, his gun, the ammunition, shotgun, ammunition, cleaning supplies, and the same way with his fishing stuff. He had his bass fishing rods. He had his cat fishing rods. He had his uh, crappie fishing rods. He had, he had his uh, throw lines. He had his bank lines. He had his trot mines. He had this and that. And, buddy, he better not w walk in that room and have it all junked up. Like when we unloaded a truck when we got back from a fishing trip or a hunting trip, he better not go out, go in that room and find it all, just throw it in there willy nilly. He would whoop my ass over that shit. So uh, we made sure that everything was in its place. Well, uh, you know, <clears throat> come Friday, we knew we was going to go fishing. So, as soon as we got off uh, out of school, boy, we'd bust ass home because we knew we had to get that damn truck loaded before he got home. Because when he got home, he wanted to just go in, change clothes, jump in that truck, and we was off. So, he kept a roster of everything that he was going to need on a fishing trip or a hunting trip or whatever. So we had to go in there and get all the stuff loaded up in the truck and have it all ready for him when he got home. And buddy, you better not, <clears throat> he better not go to that hunting and fish, hunting or fishing place and want something that wasn't there. You'd catch hell. But anyway, we get there. He grabbed his pole, man, he was off. He'd go up and he go down the go down the river fishing, and he didn't bank fish. He'd get in the river and he'd walk the river. And uh, if it was too deep for him to walk, he bought him a, a float tube. If he couldn't use the float tube, he got him a little old 12-foot aluminum boat. Uh, and while he was fishing, it was us kids' job to sane minnows, and fish for uh, uh, perch. And that's what we'd use for on his, his bank lines and stuff. And when he come time to set bank lines, you better not you better have enough bait. So uh, anyway it <clears throat> after a few years of that it just got 
kind of beat a chore, you know. I lost kind of interest in him. You know, I, I, I kind of hate to see the damn weekends coming because I knew that, yeah, it was fun once, once we got there, but the ass chewing you'd get for not having this or not having that or, or uh, you know, loading all this stuff up and then getting home and you're tired and you got to unload the truck and make sure everything's in its right place and, you know, it just got, it just got to be too much of a chore for me. So I lost interest in it. Now, once I grew up, uh, and, uh, I, you know, I was too busy working and stuff. And when I get home, I didn't want to, uh, spend my couple days off traipsing upside, up some damn riverbank or through some damn field, you know, and you might get something and then you get it, might not. Every once in a while, I'd go out squirrel hunting. You know, I'd just get up early in the morning. I'd go out to the woods and I'd sit underneath the tree and and uh, pat, 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 take my little twenty-two there, you know, and, and pop me off two or three squirrels and go home, cook them up, you know, or I'd just go fishing, you know, just lay on the river bank. And if I caught something, fine. If I didn't, no big deal. But I wasn't going to go make no big work out of it traipsing up and down the banks and set lines and, and all that other kind of crowd. You know, it just, it just wasn't that interesting in it. You know, to me, it was, it was just a therapeutical thing. But anyway, uh, once I got married and my son, he got up about six, seven years old. I told my wife, I said, uh, take him to our fishing. She said, well... Make sure you watch him, because he'll be off in that bayou in a heartbeat. Because he loved to go in the ditches and sain the ditches, you know, when it rained. Him and his little buddies is out there in their galoshes, you know, sain in the ditches and stuff. So we got to this fishing place. And boy, he gets out of the truck and he's off. Running here and running there. And I'm afraid he's going to uh, get bit by a snake. So I go to the truck and I grab his rope. And I tied around his waist and I tied him off to the tree. <laughs> and I gave him just enough rope to where he could get to the edge of the bank, and that's as far as he could get. Well, I went to Walmart and got him this little uh, Scooby Doo reel, Zepco reel. And uh, we're sitting there, you know, and after I unloaded everything and, and uh, so I told him, I said, come on, Troy, sit down here. So I bait his little hook up, you know, and I throw it out and I hand it to him. I said, now you watch this reel. I said, when it goes tap, 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 about the third time it taps, you jerk it. So I'm sitting there, you know, after I throw his out, and I'm sitting there uh, baiting mine, and out of the corner of my eye, I, I could see his damn little, little Rod tip go. And about the time I turn around and I tell him to jerk it, pshaw! Rod and all gets jerked out of his hand. And all we see is bubbles going down the bayou. <laughs> well, that was the last bite we got that day. And then another time he was quite a bit older after his mom and I got a divorce. I picked him up on the weekends because I was over the old truck driver and I had two days a week off. And uh, the first first day I, I would uh, I'd go pick Troy up and we'd go do something. And the second day is just my relaxing day to get kind of rejuvenated to go back to work Monday. <clears throat> so anyway, I pick him up and I said, well, son, you want to go fishing? He said, no, Daddy. He said, I want to go swimming. Swim. I said, all right. So we went down to Bayou. We found a place. And we got in there. We were splashing around, and we were swimming, and we was having a good time, you know. But getting in and out of this, uh, on this bank, it turned slippy and slimy, and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't get up, get up the bank. So we thought, that's cool, man. We slosh water up there, you know, and get it all nice and wet. And then we go around the backside to where it's dry. 
and we get on top of the bank and well, we go make a slide. Zoom, down the bayou we go. Well, we found uh, I was swimming along and I hit my knee up against something. I thought, what the hell is this? Well, I reached down, I could feel, feel it move, so I was lifting it up. And when I lifted it up, it was a, a big old cypress knee, but it was round. Had the prettiest swirls and pattern in the wood, you know, and a big indentation. And I thought, man, this is cool, man. I'm going to take this home and put it in my garden, put some moss in it, you know, and maybe some flowers or something. So we tried to get it up that bank. Now, that wasn't working. Too slick. So I said, well, I, I got the answer for this. So we went to the truck. I got a rope, and I backed my El Camino up on the bridge, throw this rope off, Troy tied it onto this cypress knee, and I pulled it up and lifted this damn top cypress knee up. We got right up to the rail, you know, it hung up, so me and him had to get and huff and puff and pull and yank, and we finally got it flipped over the rail, got it loaded up, because, you know, once you get out of the water, that sucker was heavy because it was waterlogged. And uh, so I, that was another good memory. And, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, folks, uh, if there's any young, young kids out here, you know, listening to this, you know, get out there in nature and, and do this stuff. You know, hunt and fish and, and make some memories because that's what you're doing. You get old like me and, and like I'm ancient or something, but, you know, uh, I got COPD. I can't hardly walk across the damn room without, without catching my breath. So while you're young and everything, get out there and, and make you some memories. Go out there and fishing and go out there hunting and, and uh, do things you enjoy while you can, while you're able to. <coughs> so uh, right now all I can do is enjoy sitting here watching YouTube, watching other people do it. And I've met some wonderful people here on YouTube, let me tell you. Joe Neon. Class A fellow man right there, right there. Uh, and uh, Char Charlie, damn Charlie, I forget your name. He's, he's a knife maker, another good old boy. And uh, I've met several. And I'm sorry I can't remember your names, but uh, my channel is is it's not growing fast, but it seems like every day there's one or two people that subscribe to me, and uh, I made a shout out here the other day and shit now I still got I got people that's added on since then so I appreciate all my subscribers so uh, I appreciate y'all thank y'all for watching I hope uh, what I do is enjoyable and uh, y'all take care God bless and I love y'all bye bye